industry. And he got a wonderful opportunity to work for a large construction company building this magical place in Orlando called Walt Disney World. <laughs> he then worked for Disney World until joining his brother, my uncle, in opening their own diners here in town. In 1990, my brothers and I decided to get in the food service industry also. With the help of our father, we started our own Cuban cafes. With the help of many organizations, we began to expand. The Greater Orlando Aviation Authority here in Orlando, with their local developing business programs, helped to give us an opportunity to compete. The local Hispanic Chamber, the Hispanic Business Initiative Fund, were all instrumental in helping train us and develop relationships to keep us learning and growing. Forming joint venture par partnerships with companies like Center Plate were also instrumental in helping us develop and learn more this big business of food service and high volume. So over the years, we've been blessed with the ability of expanding our business. And today, I'm proud to say that we run multiple locations in the Orlando International Airport. We also have a joint venture partnership with Center Plate and running the Orange County Convention Center. And we also own a Cuban bakery and a local roastery. Needless to say, tourism is a big factor in our business. A matter of fact, tourism is a big factor, excuse me, for thousands of families in Orlando that work in the service industry. Anything that increases travel to Orlando is good for all our businesses. Anything that cre increases foot traffic through our airport, right past all our restaurants, coffee shops, and retail stores is great for business. So I'm pleased that President Obama is taking steps to increase travel and tour tourism to the United States. And I'm also very pleased he came to Orlando to make this great announcement. There's no better place to be than right here at Walt Disney World. I'm also extremely excited to know that myself, Ruben Perez, my lovely wife Laura, and our children get to be one of thousands of families here in Orlando that work in the great service industry that are going to be positively impacted by the news we're about to hear. So, with that, please join me in welcoming the President of the United States, Barack Obama. Hello, everybody. I am glad to be at Disney World, the Magic Kingdom. This is outstanding. Well, uh, let me begin by uh, thanking Ruben for that extraordinary introduction. Uh, and I, he was too bashful. Maybe he's not supposed to do this. I will do it. His restaurant's called Zaza. New Cuban diners. So everybody check it out. And I told him, he was on the way out, he was wondering, I don't know, I, I don't do this a lot. I, he's a natural. <laughs> We're going to have to run him for something. Uh, but uh, thank you so much uh, for taking the time. It, it is great uh, to be here. It is rare that I get to do something that Sasha and Malia envy me for. <laughs> that, that doesn't happen very often. Uh, maybe for once they'll actually ask me at, at dinner how my day went. Uh, and I confess I am excited to see Mickey. Uh, it's always uh, nice to meet a world leader uh, who has bigger ears than me. <laughs> I. Uh, uh, I, I, I want to acknowledge uh, the presence of uh, one of Florida's outstanding mayors, the mayor of Orlando, Buddy Dyer, is in the house. We've got two outstanding members of my cabinet, Interior Secretary Ken Salazar and Commerce Secretary John Bryson. because they're focused on what brings us here today, and that's creating jobs and boosting tourism. Now, you just heard what a huge difference tourism makes for small businesses like Rubens. Every year, 
tens of millions of tourists all over the world come to visit America. Makes sense. You got the greatest country on earth, people want to come. As folks in Orlando know, that's good for our economy. It means people are renting cars and they're staying in hotels and they're eating at restaurants and they're checking out the sites. It means people are doing business here in the United States. In 2010, nearly 60 million international visitors helped the tourism industry generate over $134 billion. Tourism is the number one service that we export. Number one, and that means jobs. More money spent by more tourists means more businesses can hire more workers. It's a pretty simple formula. And that's why we're all here today, to tell the world that America is open for business. We want to welcome you and to take concrete steps to boost America's tourism industry so that we can keep growing our economy and creating more jobs here in Florida and all across the country. Now here's the good news. We've got the best product to sell. I mean, look at where we are. We've got the most entertaining destinations in the world. This is the land of extraordinary natural wonders, from the Rocky Mountains to the Grand Canyon, from Yellowstone to Yosemite. This is the land where we do big things, and so have incredible landmarks like the Golden Gate Bridge and the Empire State Building, the Hoover Dam, the Gateway Arch. This is the land of iconic cities and all their sites from Independence Hall in Philadelphia to Faneuil Hall in Boston, from the Space Needle in Seattle to the skyline of my hometown in Chicago. It's a nice skyline for those of you who've never been there. <laughs> all right, a couple of Chicagoans back there. <laughs> but I'm here today because I, I want more tourists here tomorrow. I want America to be the top tourist destination in the world. The top tourist destination in the world. And this is something that we've been focused on for some time. Two years ago, I signed a bill into law called the Travel Promotion Act. It had broad support of both Democrats and Republicans, and as you know, that doesn't always happen. And it set up a new nonprofit organization called Brand USA. Its job is to pitch America as a travel de destination for the rest of the world to come to visit. You guys see advertising for other countries, other destinations here in the United States, right? Well, we, we've got to do the same thing so that when people are thinking about where they want to travel, where they want to spend their vacation, we want them to come here. And so that's already in place, but we've got to do more. So today I directed my administration to send me a new national tourism strategy focused on creating jobs and some of America's most successful business leaders, some who are here today, have signed up to help. We're going to see how we can make it easier for foreign tourists to find basic information about visiting America. And we're going to see how we can attract more tourists to our national parks. We want people visiting not just Epcot Center, but the Everglades, too. The more folks who visit America, the more Americans we get back to work. It's that simple. Now, just as we do a better job of marketing our tourist destinations, we've also got to make it easier for tourists to make the visit. There's a good reason why it's not easy for anybody to get a visa to come to America. Obviously, our national security is a top priority. We will always protect our borders and our shores and our tourist destinations from people who want to do us harm. And unfortunately, such people exist. And that's not going to change. But we also want to get more international tourists coming to America. And there's no reason why we can't do both. We can make sure that we're doing a good job keeping America secure, while at the same time maintaining the openness that's always been the hallmark of America, and making sure that we're welcoming travelers 
from all around the world. So one step we're taking is the expansion of something called the Global Entry Program. It's a program that protects our borders and makes, our, uh, and makes life easier for frequent travelers to and from the United States. Now, getting into the program requires an extensive background check, but once you're in, once you've proven yourself to be a solid individual who's coming here for business or recreation purposes, instead of going through long lines at immigration, you, we can scan your passport, your fingerprints, and you're on your way. So it's a great example of how we're using new technology to maintain national security and boost tourism at the same time. And we're now going to make it available to almost all international travelers coming to the United States. If they're willing to submit themselves to the background checks necessary, we can make sure that we're facilitating their easy travel into the United States. There are some additional steps, though, that we can take. Right now, there are 36 countries around the world whose citizens can visit America without getting a tourist visa. After they go online, they get pre-cleared by Homeland Security, and there's only one thing they have to do, and that's book a flight. And that's been a great boost for tourism. Over 60% of our visitors don't require a visa, and in most cases, that's because of this program. Today, I'm directing my administration to see if we can add more countries to it. We want more folks to have an easier time coming to the United States. And let's also realize that in the years ahead, more and more tourists are going to come from countries not currently in this program. Countries with rapidly growing economies, huge populations, and emerging middle classes. Countries like China and, and India. And especially important for here in Florida, Brazil. A huge population that loves to come to Florida. But we make it too hard for them. More and more of their people can now afford to visit America who couldn't come before. And in fact, over the next four years, the tourists traveling from those countries, we expect to more than double. Well, we want them coming right here. We want them spending money here, in Orlando, in Florida, in the United States of America, which will boost our businesses and our economy. So today, I'm directing the State Department to accelerate our ability to process visas by 40 percent in China and in Brazil this year. We're not, we're not talking about five years from now or ten years from now, this year. We've already made incredible progress in this area. We've better staffed our embassies and our consulates. We've streamlined services with better technology. Waiting times for a visa are down. But applications keep on going up. They are skyrocketing. People want to come here. And China and Brazil are the two countries which have some of the biggest backlogs. And these are two of the countries with some of the fastest growing middle classes that want to visit and have disposable income, money that they want to spend at our parks and our monuments and at businesses like Rubens. So that's what this is all about, telling the world that America is open for business making it as safe and as simple as possible to visit, helping our businesses all across the country grow and create jobs, helping those businesses compete and win. Ultimately, that's how we're going to rebuild an economy where hard work pays off, where responsibility is rewarded, and where anybody can make it if they try. That's what America is all about. That's part of the reason why people want to come here, because they know our history. And they know what the American dream has been all about. And, and a place like Disneyland represents uh, that quintessentially American spirit. This image is something that's recognized all around the world. And this weather is something that <laughs> people appreciate uh, all around the world, including uh, the northern parts of this country. So uh, we want everybody to come, all who are watching. Uh, Disney World and Florida are open for business, but we want people all around the world to know the same, 
and we are going to do everything we can to make sure that we're continuing to boost tourism for decades to come. Thank you very much, everybody. God bless you. God bless the United States of America.